Hello, hello, and welcome to myfinanceteacher.org. In this video, we're going to have a look at a very interesting asset, and that is copper. Actually, a couple of days ago, I got a comment from a member at myfinanceteacher.org asking me to have a look at copper. And I've actually had copper in mind for quite a while because uh, it uh, tends to follow the general stock markets quite well, and uh, I do like to look at the general stock market, as you know from my uh, older videos. By the way, if you want to join us at uh, myfinanceteacher.org, you are more than welcome. And to do that, you can click at this register link over here, that's at myfinanceteacher.org. Registering will give you access to all of this restricted content. The membership only costs $5 for the first month and only $10 after that. So let's have a look at copper. I actually quite like cycles in copper. First, let's have a look at this period from late 2011 into early to mid-2016. During all of this period, generally the trend for copper price was down. This, by the way, is weekly chart. And what we see is that in a downtrend that lasts for a number of years, usually the tops in these intermediate cycles in copper tend to only retest or marginally break above the 50-week moving average. The blue line on the chart. As you see during this period, only once copper didn't actually reach, didn't actually manage to at least retest this 50-week moving average. And that was in the second half of 2015. Since early to late 2016, copper has actually been performing relatively well for a couple of years. And as you see, when a trend is to the upside for a number of years, these intermediate cycles in copper tend to retest this 50-week moving average from the upside or maybe just marginally break below that 50-week moving average. For the last couple of years though, with the trade war scare and more recently with the health concerns, copper has generally been trending downwards, except for the last few months. We see that in the previous three intermediate cycles, copper only marginally broke above that 50-week moving average a couple of times, and one time it didn't even manage to retest that 50-week moving average from the lower side. What I usually like to look at for these cycles is duration, because although it's hard to forecast the level of a cycle low or a cycle top, duration might actually be useful for trying to prepare for that nice buying opportunity. And over the last eight to nine years, the average duration of an intermediate cycle in copper has been around 32 weeks. So that's slightly longer than half a year cycle, which actually matches pretty well with the cycles in the general stock market, both in duration as well as the phase. So here, looking at this relationship between copper in candles and S&P 500, the blue line, we see that the bottom part of the chart, which shows the correlation between these two assets, is mostly positive. In the last eight to nine years, there have only been a handful of cases when this correlation between copper and S&P 500 was significantly negative. And those handful of cases didn't last for very long. And of course, one would expect this as copper is an industrial metal. Before we continue, let me remind you guys to subscribe to the channel if you haven't and click that bell notification. Thanks a lot. Next, I want to show you seasonality in copper, although I do prefer cycles myself more than seasonality. In either case, this is a 30-year seasonality with the average returns for the months of the year over the last 30 years. Today is 21st of August. And over the last 30 years, we see that August has actually been moderately bad month for copper, and September over the last 30 years has been pretty bad. But uh, things change, and uh, I think it might be more useful to look at a shorter term seasonality. This is the seasonality going back to 2016, when there was a change in the long term trend in copper price. So, looking at this four to five year seasonality, we see that August might actually turn out to be a relatively good month for copper. And that actually makes sense at the moment as copper and general stock market have been doing pretty well over the last several weeks. Whereas September and October might turn out to be a relatively bad months for copper. And that also makes sense. As I've mentioned in some of my recent videos, I still do expect 
a decline into the end of the ongoing intermediate cycle in the general stock market and that might bring copper down as well. Market cycles are related a lot to the general sentiment on the markets. So let's have a look at the optimism index in copper. The general wisdom in trading is that you want to buy the asset when there is blood on the streets, when nobody wants to own the assets. That's when there are no more sellers left. So the change is much more likely to bring price to the upside simply because there aren't many sellers left on the market. So you want to buy when the sentiment is really low, when everybody is really pessimistic about the asset. And you want to sell when everybody wants this asset, when everybody is euphoric about the really nice gains the asset has created. That's when the asset is probably too hot and you probably want to reduce your positions. So this blue line here measures this sentiment and it actually aligns very well with those intermediate cycles that I've just shown to you. For a couple of years after 2016, when the general trend in copper prices was upwards, the buying opportunities arised when this optimism index on copper was first around 10 to 15, that's at the very bottom of that commodity market, and later the opportunities arised with this optimism index slightly higher. And of course, you generally wanted to sell when this optimism index was approaching the red line or above that red line. Same general idea works for this period in 2018 and 2019, when the prices generally trended downwards. Just as cycle lows appear, you probably want to buy when this optimism index is pretty low, somewhere close to this green line or below that, and you want to sell at cycle tops when the optimism index is pretty high, close to the red line. And at the moment, just like with the general stock market, optimism is extremely high. Everybody is euphoric about the gains that copper has created since March. So, in my personal opinion, I think it's not really an opportune time to buy at the moment. So, let's zoom in a little bit at what's happening at the moment and see how long this intermediate cycle has been going on. It's been going on for 22 weeks, with the average duration of the cycle of around 32 weeks over the last 8 to 9 years. So this cycle is most likely already beyond its midpoint and although some uh, further strength is likely over the next several weeks, especially if the Fed is dovish and helps the general stock market move even higher, but over the next several months I would expect a relatively nicer buying opportunity in copper. Next let's have a look at this chart that might convince you that market cycles are actually important to consider in your trading decisions. Here's the chart of the difference between the 10-week moving average and 20-week moving average on copper price. And what do we see here? We see cycles. We see this measurement cycling up and down, cycling up and down. Generally, the lows are somewhere around uh, 15 cents. That's when the 10-week moving average is around 15 cents below the 20-week moving average. And the highs are anywhere between 10 to 15 cents. That's when the 10-week moving average is 10 to 15 cents above the 20-week moving average. Next, let's have a look at the ratio of 10-week moving average to 20-week moving average. Again, that's actually a similar chart and I do see cycles here, lasting for probably slightly longer than half a year. And the bottoms of this cycling are usually when the 10-week moving average is something like 5% below the 20-week moving average. Whereas the tops of this cycling is somewhere in the area when the 10-week moving average is 2-4% to above the 20-week moving average. So there you go. I hope it helps you in uh, some of your investing and trading decisions. If you want more details, join us at myfinanceteacher.org. As you see here, I post regular updates on a range of assets and my colleague writes weekly newsletters where he shares his extensive investment experience spanning over a number of decades. For now, I wish you a wonderful day and good luck in your trades.